Hello, 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 hello. Oh my God, what is this? What is this? <laughs> is this Spotify.com right now? What is happening? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spotify.com. They have offered me a multi-million deal, multi-million dollar deal for exclusively streaming through their platform. No, this is a Spotify listening party. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the album. I'm going to offer some additional commentary. I think some of you have probably already tuned into some of my Twitch streams and stuff like that. But for the for the normies that are only on Spotify, uh, I'm going to be just giving some context for some of the music, talking through it, talking through some favorite lyrics. But as people join, I'm going to play an inspo track. This first one is Here in Your Arms by Hello Goodbye. We're going to bump this as people still join. Cheeks can brush, our lips can touch. This is kind of fun. I feel like I'm DJing right now. What the hell? Wait, really quick, if I hit pause and play over and over and over, <laughs> is that, I'm going to try it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Hold on. Okay, that didn't work very well. I'm trying to, I'm, they're like testing out this platform. I'm trying to find ways to break it on the first song. Okay, the, the stop start didn't work for me either. Let's run the song. I like where you sleep when you sleep next to me. I like where you sleep here. Our lips can touch and our cheeks can brush. Yeah, wow, well, man. That song is so good. That's like a perfect pop song, I think. Let's do one more because I, I still see the number of viewers is going up. And then we're going to get into the album. I'm trying to decide between two songs here. I, uh, let's see. What are we, what are we going to bump today? Um, oh, yeah, me saying bump makes everybody think I'm going to play. 365, but like that song's so, ev that's, it's everywhere right now. It's like, we don't even need me to play it. Um, I'm gonna play, this is like, this is a song I show people all the time. 
Um, one of my good friends, one of my very good friends is, is Michael Clifford from the band Five Seconds of Summer. And I like wasn't really super familiar with their music. Um, I was a bad friend. And I went and saw them live earlier last year. And I was like, this one song that he sings on, I was like, this is like one of the most beautiful emo songs I've ever heard. I am so obsessed with the chorus. And my favorite part is the live version where it's like just Michael and the guitar. Um, this is a song called Jet Black Heart. And the version I like is live from the Royal Albert, I think. Oh my God, this song is so beautiful. I love this chorus. Not shown a strike yet, and every flyer I've ignited faded to gray. But now that I'm broken, now that you know it, I'm caught up in a moment. Can you see inside? And cause I've got a jet black horn. And there's a hurricane underneath that Trying to keep us apart All right With the poison pen But these chemicals Will in between us Are the reason To start it again My ADHD is going crazy right now. I like play the first two minutes of songs and then kind of skip it. One more. This was like, okay, here's the thing. Okay, like this song, I I have to admit, I was like, this is like a similar situation, like to the to the five sauce thing, where I was not like I was not really pilled on Twenty One Pilots before this and then i heard this song came out i saw the music video came out for it and i was like this is so 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 good like i've been sleeping on this band for so long and then like three weeks later tyler joseph shouted out my song cheerleader and i was like dude if i start talking about next semester and how much i love this song i'm gonna look like i'm gonna look like such a, a fair weather fan you know like I, <laughs> it's gonna look like i'm just like reciprocally like shouting out their music, but it was like, th I was already completely obsessed with this song. This is so, this, this dude, this song, like, this was definitely gonna be at the top of my Spotify, like most listened rap at the end of the year.
I'm going to let this song play in its entirety just because like every person I've showed this song to, it's like, they're like, yeah, it's cool. But then like by the time the third chorus comes around or like their second listen, people are like, wait a minute, this is good. sorry about that guys that was my dog that that's my dog that goes crazy every time i get insane chills from a song what the hell that la dude that last chorus the vocal delivery on it it is oh my god i was like i was like reading the chat i was like getting teary eyed that song is so 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 beautiful man uh especially like if you watch the video you know the context about what it like means to them dude like Josh's drum sounds so, so, so good. I think the drums sound incredible on this album. I don't know, man. This like song single handedly converted me into an Omega stan. Whereas before I was like, I just like I, I I don't know. I was not I was not a 21 pilots listener. I just that album and uh, midwest indigo also god such a good song honestly the whole album's goaded i i i love seeing my fans in the chat being converted as this song played being like wait a minute did you just make me a 21 pilots fan <laughs> okay i i i'm having a little too much fun right now so i'm gonna do one more i'm gonna do one more song people keep mentioning pine grove um i absolutely love that band too uh big big influence on the new record and i think i'm gonna play the song the first song that made them quick for me is a band off their album 1111 um the song iodine uh man this is like this is maybe slightly more of that nurture pill um it's a little more of that like reflective melancholic hopeful sound but like i have like i actually have like 50 songs liked by this band on spotify so recommend I Try. 
tried to see if something catches me right. But nothing I try can abbreviate the time, can alleviate my mind. We get down. Dude, I need to do a DJ set of just like, <laughs> I feel like if I got all my fans in a room and did a DJ set that was like all non-electronic music, people would be like, I think that would be an insanely fun experience because I'm like watching people's reactions to this and they like the exact same moments that I do and are responding is like, I really feel like I've attracted people who are like-minded with my music because I wear my taste on my sleeve so much and I try to put anything that gives me euphoria into my music anything that gives me that rush or gives me chills i'm like keep that keep that keep that uncompromisingly so it just makes sense that like a song that i really love my audience is listening to it and they're like wait what is this what is this that'd be really fun I could actually just do this all day. Like I could just do this all day. This is like way too fun.
right, all right, all right. So I see some people asking for like the track list. So what's everything that we played so far? The very first song that I played was Here in Your Arms by Hello Goodbye. Then I played Jet Black Heart Live from the Royal Albert by Five Seconds of Summer. Then I played Next Semester by 21 Pilots. Then I played Iodine by Pine Grove. And finally, I played Elysis by McGee. Um, yeah, it's really, you know, this is very fun for me. I don't know how many people in this audience think of themselves as primarily like dance music listeners, but dude, the, just like songs with choruses, man, songwriting music, it just, it hits so hard for me. It's like the reason my music pivoted so much in the way that it did was because I was just chasing the euphoria. Um, okay. I got one more, one more for y'all before we get into the album. Because I should do it. I'm preparing for this big tour right now. I got to get into rehearsals. I'm like doing feedback on visuals. I promised visuals team I was going to get feedback on everything today. Huge, huge tour coming up. It's going to be insane and amazing. Um, so I do have stuff I got to do today. But I got, I got, I got one more. I got one more thing I got to play for y'all before I get into the album. So this week, Owl City has been coming up a lot. People compare my music to Owl City a lot. And it's something that I've been like weirdly defensive about. I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a postal service person first and foremost. That was one of the first influences on me. And I've been like, I don't think my music sounds like Owl City, whatever. I want to extend an olive branch today with an Owl City song that I actually truly, truly love. And I think is extremely beautiful. Um, it's one of the older ones and uh, it features Brianne Duran, who sang on a couple of songs in my first album, Worlds. Um, I feel like this is kind of free farm on my fans. Anyone who's listening, I feel like if you like Porter music, you're probably going to like this. Um, and I'm going to play the Maybe I'm Dreaming version of the song, The Saltwater Room. This song is really, really beautiful.
Dude, I'm never, I'm never beating the Owl City fan allegations by being like, I'm gonna play the version of this from Maybe I'm Dreaming, not the Oceanized version. Like that one's like, you don't wanna listen to that one. Man, that song is that song is very very beautiful. This means something to me. Um, by the way, there's like a long pause after every time I stop the music because like Chrome is sending me a notification. It's like, do you want to use your microphone? Press here to allow Spotify. We got to get on that. We'll fix that for next time. Um, okay, dude, I I'm I I can't stop. Last one before the album. I just. A comment reminded me of this, and I do want to bump this really quick because I feel like, okay, so in 2023, I had the very rare honor of getting my very own character Vocaloid. It's a character named Po Uta. Um, my Spanish-speaking fans had a laugh with that, but Uta means sing in Japanese, and it's just a play on my name. Like po My Japanese fans call me Pota, Potaro Vincent and it's like the katakana version of it and so i just took pota and added the word uh sing to it so po uta and this is a song called human songs and it was like sort of me reflecting on artificial intelligence which is really on my mind at the time and the various ways in which it could be disastrous but maybe beautiful and uh so this is a song sung by my own signature Vocaloid character, which was based off of my, the way that I affected my voice for the album Nurture. Um, we recorded me, they, they created the voice bank um, by me like recording, singing a lot of, like I did a bunch of different covers of like some of my own music. I did some songs in Japanese actually uh, using the Nurture voice and just sort of sent them the acapellas and that's how they were able to construct this voice bank. Um, but this, I feel like is one of my more underappreciated songs because it's basically a demo for a product, but I think it lives on its own as its own song. This is a song called Human Songs by me and my vocaloid, Po Uta. You hesitate, the things you care about, you're scared to say, and so I help you do the things you do.
Why am I crying, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah. I should have said this at the top of the song, but like, I was thinking about how this voice bank could like outlive me, basically. And um, so that was the the like perspective through which I was writing the song. I think I was also kind of like overrating the potential of AI at that time. Anybody who's familiar with the subject might know that like a lot of the AI tools are sort of plateauing right now at like roughly the median level of human output. Um, like a lot of them like were improving really quickly at the beginning. I was like, oh my God, this is going to surpass us in every conceivable way. Nowadays, I sort of feel like AI music and AI art is like feels like plausible human art, but it's like without a point of view. It's almost like the, the analogy I repeatedly use is like in SpongeBob where they try to make Krabby Patties at the Chum Bucket and from the outside it looks like a Krabby Patty, but on the inside it's like all gray goo. That's kind of how like <laughs> AI art and music feels to me these days. But if somebody can make something cool out of it, like whatever. Um, okay, so uh, let's get into the album. Uh, and yeah, I might be misremembering that analogy. Uh, Maybe it's the Pretty Patties episode. I don't know. Maybe I I got I got to rewatch SpongeBob seasons one through three. Let's get into the album. Uh, so this album, Smile, by Porter Robinson, is <laughs> this this album is kind of like a reflection on where I'm at in my life. It's like more of a capsule of just a couple of years of my life than previous albums. Nurture was something that took me six or so years to make from start to finish. I completed this album in, in about two years. Came from a period of my life where I was like questioning my, basically like my, my own addiction to like success and being in the public eye and wanting to be loved and, you know, wanting to be great and, and so on and so forth. And it's like, my life is so wrapped up in this subject. My life is so wrapped up in this, but I, like, it's like, I need it. I don't know. This is this whole album is like me picking apart my relationship with fame, my relationship with my audience, everything, um, and everything that goes along with that. All the defensiveness, all the anxiety, all the excitement, all of the trauma. Um, I tried to put everything from this subject into a single album, and I've said this before, but I think this is like the this album is kind of like the last word on this subject for me. I I think I've said what I wanted to say. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm curious what will be the next thing on my mind. Anyways, let's get into some of the bangers. This album has a lot of bangers up top. So let's get into Knock Yourself Out. If you know the lyrics, I want you to spam that business in the chat. Let's make this shit go a million miles an hour. This is Knock Yourself Out XD by the one and only Porter Robinson. Wait, what the hell? Quit. 
There went another one. Dude, I, man, I'm still waiting on that new Bugatti. I thought that I, I thought I was, I thought maybe by speaking it into existence, I would have one. Still no Bugatti. Maybe I should get the face tattoo though. Maybe I'll get a face tattoo that says Spotify listening party 8-5-2024. Um, yeah, dude, that song is going to go so hard live, and I got a special plan for it. Okay, let's get into the next song on the album. As you know, Biggest Banger, typically song number two on the album. In terms of the song, or in terms of the album structure, I, uh, like, one of the, my biggest things on this album was embracing the idea of musical fundamentals and cliches. So like I, this album was my first time playing guitar. So like, I didn't, I don't know very much about the guitar. I basically just know a couple of chord shapes and I'm like using the capo a ton. And like, it led me to this real love of fundamentals, the fundamentals of songwriting, fundamentals of music production, like bringing things kind of back to basics in a way and writing songs that feel very like essential. Like this next song, I kind of wanted it to be like a soccer stadium chant in a way. Um, but the way that that pertains to the album structure, is like yeah i was like i'm definitely not breaking any conventions here i am putting the best song at song number two this is cheerleader Sorry for pausing, sorry for pausing. I couldn't get my microphone to work. I'm jumping around my room right now. It's kind of sad how It's not your fault you're living in a madhouse I can't back down Aren't you tired of blending into the background? She's got hearts in her eyes Saying, boy, you better watch the time Cause if you're not mine I'd rather see you burn alive oh. Says she hates me cause I She was 
rooting for me all the time I love the type That makes you dedicate your life Oh, my cheerleader Thought she needed me, but I Oh, damn. Oh, damn. When I played that song at the album listening party, man, I've so like, you know, my people who follow me know that I've been like active in the public eye for like, what is it, 16 years now? Like I first started touring when I was 18. Been out here forever. Old on man. And this song playing this live at the listening party, dude, this like i felt like a brand new artist like seeing it's crazy right because i released this song a few months ago but i never ever performed it or seen a crowd react to it playing at the listening party i felt like i had written like mr brightside or something like i i i was seeing like it felt like i was watching like eighty thousand people at glastonbury like i, I just i've i've made a lot of songs that i think are really good but seeing a crowd react to that was like beyond anything I've experienced. Like, dude, just the hearing of all the voices of people singing that song during the chorus and jumping at the same time. Like, I just, I just felt like I, I felt like I snapped. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. By the way, I want to, I want to. I'm looking at the chat right now. Is be honest with me. Is there anybody here who has not like made it to the end of the album yet like just hasn't gotten around to it like maybe familiar with the singles got the notification on spotify raise your hand if you have not gotten to the end of the album dude wait everyone's listened to the album wait, a, i see a couple me's a couple yes okay for those few people that are saying yes stick around like let's get to the end of the album together here because like i think the last the run of the last four songs is very 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 cool and worth hearing we're gonna do another single right now. This is Russian Roulette. My most controversial sequencing decision on this album. Porter, why is Russian Roulette song number three? Why isn't it the last song? I'll tell you why. Because like the vibe of it, it just feels like the beginning. It feels like the when it's like it's me smiling for the team as I stare directly into the storm. It just, dude, it just <laughs> it just feels it feels like the like you're at the beginning, staring off into the distance. I don't know, it just, it, the, the, that's the tough thing about sequencing the song. The first half feels like the beginning, the last half feels like the end. And, um, okay, yeah, let's listen to the funny monkey takes a piss into its own mouth crazy song. This is Russian Roulette, strap in. Trust me, it's sure thing, Russian.
We are less than a third of the way through the song right now, by the way. Long ass song. Funny monkey takes a piss into his own mouth crazy. And I thought it's strange to sell my face. But let's just make the most of it. Now my hand is strong. I put the gun against the thing. Dude, dude, who else just tried to type that and got like warned by Spotify? <laughs> I tried to type funny monkey takes a P word into its own mouth crazy and they nearly deleted my account. Sorry for inter interrupting. I like didn't really know Coldplay until this last year. Everyone's gonna be saying that that's not true. You can believe me or not. I just like was such an electronic music person that I didn't really pill myself on like the history of rock music, which yes, Coldplay is a part of. And I heard the song Fix You and I was like, what? This is so beautiful. And that was what inspired me to do this like organ sound here. But it took on a particular meaning for me that was different. Like when you're talking about, I don't even know if I can say what this song is about on Spotify, <laughs> but with this subject, the feeling of like hearing a church organ against that lyric, I realized that was putting a very particular image in my head and oh uh, man, chills, yeah. Shout out to my cat, Koneko, by the way. Best cat ever. Sorry to your cat. Your cat everyone knows his cat is tied for second best. Sorry.
close. That's the format we're used to. Cliches like this are beautiful, because they reflect us, and we are beautiful. Take, for example, this chord progression. It only became taboo because it was too powerful. That's why you won't forget it. Don't kill yourself, you idiot. Hello. It only became... Well, <coughs> hold on. Don't kill yourself, you idiot. <laughs> wait, wait, my, my voice is cooked right now. It only became taboo because it is too powerful. Don't kill yourself, you idiot. Okay, but some real talk. Man, I'm so... I'm just gonna say this. I'm so, so, so glad I'm alive. And every moment of my life that I felt like I couldn't go on was an illusion. It was fake. It was a very convincing illusion, but it was fake. And I'm just so, so, so happy to be here. I'm so happy to get to kiss my cat one more time. I'm so happy to be able to be with my wife. Like it's, yeah, dude, living is all we got. It's awesome. Um, okay, ba -da, da da let's go. Better do you understand? I got your name on my sweater and your life in my hands. Oh, 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 oh. Just a little simulation of being a friend I think we all feel better when you play the game Somebody's gotta say the things I'm trying not to say Oh oh, oh, oh. Somebody's gotta say the things I'm trying not to say That song was built out of a kind of interesting exercise where I was like driving home and I put my like spot, actually not hashtag sponsored. I put my Spotify on shuffle and say no to distracted driving, but I was like re-liking every single song that I felt like I could like make something out of. And so I kind of like re-liked 15 songs. By the way, to the makers of Spotify, 
can we please make it so that you can unlike and relike stuff in a single button press? Please, I love you guys so much, but I don't want to have to add it to a playlist called like songs. I just want it to go straight to my like like songs if I hit the heart button. Please, please, please. Okay, just saying. Love you guys, but please. Um, and so I was like reliking a bunch of music because uh, that's how it works in my car. And so I took like these like 20 songs, just random songs from my, <laughs> from my library. And um, I just gave myself 10 minutes to try to like make something similar to each song. I don't even remember what song this was. It was just like, it was something, I think this track was based on some random thing from the like Spotify Indie Sleaze playlist or something like that. And it sounds nothing like the reference but I wrote that guitar riff and I was kind of off to the races. The thing I love about Perfect Pinterest Garden is that it's like one of the more restrained Porter songs. It doesn't have 500 trillion layers. It's like five elements. I wanted to prove I could do something like that. Something that was super dry, super simple, like no reverbs, no delays. And then the other thing is I love the bridge of that song. Okay, y'all. This next one is called The Year of the Cup. Um, I've heard some people ask about the sample here people ask me was like was this you talking to lil wayne or was this like you recording yourself so this is from a lil wayne interview where the interviewer is pressing him about what he's been drinking and this was at sort of the height of people learning about like lean and like lean addictions and so it was speculated at the time that he may or may not perhaps have been drinking some lean inside of his cup and yeah the interviewer is pressing him and asking him what it's about and he kind of pushes back and that inspired me it made me it, this song made me re reflect on like my own relationship to drinking and, and alcohol in particular um not lean they react so whatever the hell was in my cup the only reaction i did was got more popular more successful did a lot more things that I've ever done. Picked up a guitar, learned how to play it, learned how to put on the auto tunes and stretch my voice. I probably should pick that cup back up. <laughs> Cause my mind keeps ringing with the times that I laid out Everything wrong with me up on stage It's embarrassing Fuck you, you don't deserve me The bus went totally silent And help me was what I meant to say As I gnashed my teeth right in front of you Kinda of put the cup down for a minute, but um, ain't nothing in the cup right now but some wine. I drank Dolce. That's about it. That's the only thing in the cup right now. But honestly, I asked you if I never change, would you love 
me Expecting the negative clever Turning the question around to me Was obvious hate this version of me that was safe and sanitized thoroughly you think you'll let people down and define some perfect apology the answer was obvious the answer was obvious the answer was obvious to his obvious What's in the cup? Is it really none of my goddamn business? Yeah. Dude, that song is reflecting on especially the like world's era of my life. I was still like really, really young at that time. I was like 23, 24. And basically imagine this, okay? Like you're a very nerdy kid in high school in North Carolina and you've been making computer music your whole life <laughs> and uh, like playing Dance Dance Revolution and like you know not receiving a ton of attention and suddenly like one of your songs goes viral and you're put on this path of like i was on tour with skrillex i was on tour with tiesto and my life just changed overnight and i felt like i how do i put it like when i was on the very the earliest days of like edm stardom i just felt like i was pretending to be somebody else i felt like i was playing a role of this like rock star dj thing so I made this album Worlds and it was a lot closer to the center of my taste and what I actually, what I actually love. And I know Worlds is considered an EDM album now at the time it really wasn't. It was like a, you know, synth pop indie record. And I was going from stage to stage, by the way, I was getting drunk every single night on stage. I mean, I was, this is the only way for this like anxious nerd to get on stage and pretend to be cool. So I was getting drunk every single night I would get on stage. It was like the only way I could get through it. Thank God I wasn't doing like Xanax or something. I actually had a doctor who I described the problem of how much alcohol I was drinking to him. And he was like, oh, let me get you a Xanax prescription. What the fuck? This is in California. Weird, weird off behavior. Anyway, I did not accept that offer. Um, <laughs> so I was like getting drunk on stage and it would half the time it was amazing i felt unstoppable and i felt invincible and the other half of the time i would feel i would get in my head or feel like the crowd wasn't rocking with me because like it was basically still these like club going edm crowds and i was trying to play this music that i thought of was very escapist and slower and i just felt like people weren't getting me and i was like lashing out at crowds and screaming at people and like having these tantrums after shows like being all drunk and angsty and in my head and um, this song is like a reflection on that time of like me trying to, me basically figuring out that I needed to not drink. And, um, but then I'm also reflecting on like positive things that it brought me. Like I'm reflecting on like the, the line where it's like something's in the air, like vanilla I got on my Facebook. And that time I had the courage to call her and tell her that I loved her. And yeah, I don't want to put too much into that story, but basically, they were, okay, fuck it. I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Like the first time I ever, talk to Rika on the phone I was like drunk after a show and I wonder if I would have had the courage to do that if I had not been drinking anyway it's uh, this whole album is all about like reflecting on the on the upsides and downsides of addictions that's a big big theme here and trying to put nuance into everything and uh anyways year of the cup means a ton to me I know I've seen some people shitting on that song I think it's just like just dead beautiful. I think it's like one of the most meaningful pieces of music I've I've ever made. And uh, 
anyway yeah i don't know i don't know if i should have shared that information about my relationship whoops porter's being parasocial again but uh i like i don't know it just this shit means something to me let's go into kitsune meson freestyle which is like kind of about another addiction which is well let's 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 fucking play it Far. Wait a minute. So, okay, some of y'all might know that in as like part of promoting this song, because this song is about fashion, it's about trying to look good, it's about like, it's just another form of wanting to be liked and wanting to be approved of by others. But fashion's complicated, right? Because it's like a requisite form of self-expression, unlike other or art forms, like you kind of have to wear clothes every day. So like, that's one of the things that's interesting to me about fashion is everybody participates to some extent. Um, it's a, like a required form of self-expression. Um, and what the hell was I gonna say? Oh yeah, one of the things I did to promote this song was I went to LA and I did like a pop-up at the My Son Kitsune store and just gave away basically all of my designer clothes. I have a couple of things left that like I Marie Kondo style just looked at it and I was like, I can't give this away. But I also gave away like some rare archival merch and I gave away some music video costumes and stuff like that. And I see people in the comments now being like, yo, come to Miami and give away clothes. And it's like, I gave away like basically everything. Like there's not going to be another one of these. It's, it's, I, I do not have the unlimited, I, I like actually dead ass gave away like basically everything that I could. All right. Anyway. Nah, nah, I don't want to listen to this part. I don't want to listen to this part. Too embarrassing. Next song. You're gonna make a scene Comparing yourself to the person you were at age seven Hold on, hold on. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, fine. Fuck it, fuck it. We'll do it, we'll do it. I'm a girl my head. I'm a girl my cat.
Wait, I actually don't think I can like jump through the song. Oh, I don't think I can actually jump through the song. I like we're back at the beginning. All right, all right, whatever. But dude, the ending, the ending of Kitsune Mae Son Freestyle into Easier to Love You is really, really, really nice. Okay, we're running. I dude, I actually can't. I can't do it from the people are saying you're lying. I actually can't. That was actually an accident. Make some noise in the chat if you were not rocking with Kitsune based on freestyle and first listen, and now you're like, wait a minute. Like that chorus comes in, and you're like, wait a minute, wait, like maybe I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's like it it's it's hard. I don't know. I, I was also not really rating it at first. I was like, this is cool. And then I started showing it to people. And when the chorus came in, people would be like, everyone really responded. Um it felt special the listening party too. Anyway, this next song, I think this next song is potentially low key the low key the best. It's like I'm not this isn't me just like 
talking in a brain rotted way. I'm using low key in an actual way. Although I do talk in a brain rotted way constantly. I think this song is the maybe best song on the album, but in a like low key way. Like I think that, I don't know. I love this song. Wait, Spotify, what? It's not working. What, 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 what? Hold on. Man, I'm so glad that people like like that song and understand it. 
it was a contender for a single for a while. Um, it was originally slotted in because we had the music video and Russian Roulette didn't have a music video. It was slotted in to be the third single. But I think just we, I felt like too much time had passed between songs and I felt like the third song needed a real, a, a, like a new injection of energy into the campaign. And I was just worried about putting out a ballad at that point in the rollout and like it sort of boring people or something. I wanted like that injection of energy. I'm really glad I made Russian Roulette a single. Um, I think it could have like potentially fallen under the radar and like, like dude, my, my label, which shout out to my label, they're listening to this conversation right now, but they were like, very nervous about me putting out a six and a half minute song um, as a single. Uh, but I'm, I'm really glad that we did it. Uh, I feel like it was the right call. Easier to Love You went through so many different versions. The first version was actually kind of similar to what we ended up with. It was, it was like a, it was, it was more of a, it was a ballad, but it was a more synthy ballad. It wasn't guitar driven at all. It was like all pads and stuff like that. It was, it was like, a downtown, almost more of a frou-frou thing or like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It was like spacious, almost like new age sounding, which is not a reference that I normally go for. And then I made like a very sunny dance pop version of that, which I really like, but the one that I, ult I, I couldn't shake the feeling, <laughs> shake the feeling that this song needed to be a ballad and so when I was in Paris, uh, I was working with the Frost Children. I just like spent a month in Paris working. I worked on this song. I worked on Katsuna Miss on Freestyle. And I worked on Mona Lisa when I was there. And I made this song in basically a couple of hours. Like I re-recorded it as more of a live thing and more guitar driven. And it just finally, no, actually there are four versions of this song. I restarted four times. Um, and I like the fact that the final one doesn't feel overcooked. You know, it doesn't feel like it was a uh, highly labored thing it sounds like it the first draft because i think it's what it was supposed to be all along um i also had a ton of lyrical breakthroughs during that trip to paris like i wrote that second verse that just like that framing of finding a letter to yourself um and realizing that me like maybe you've disappointed a younger version of yourself or that your optimism was like misplaced or something like that but i remember my, my my good friend garrett he he brought his girlfriend into the studio and she had never heard the song before and i played it and she was like bawling on the first listen and she was like this is so you this is so you and that made a huge impression on me one other little anecdote about easier to love you is that i like from the people in my life i initially encountered some resistance on the like the way the word 17 is so drawn out and as well as the like oh oh before that i'll join the gym like i think that got some resistance from people at first like that sounds kind of weird like maybe you can make that sound more normal but I thought that it was infectious and catchy and ear catching with how weird it was. Like both the like, oh, oh, and the 17 thing being so long. Um, I think it adds memorability. Anyway, that's my, I, I, I'm really enormously proud of that song. Also, I saw somebody was asking who played the banjo. The banjo was played by Mikey Freedom Heart uh, from the band Bleachers. Uh, it was also, I think, produced for Taylor Swift. Ever been in the studio with Taylor Swift? He's done a bunch of shout out, Mikey. He's amazing, incredible producer, one of the coolest guys I've met. Um, in very, very, very talented player. So yeah, this song was basically done. But then I took it into the studio with Mikey and with Gavin from the band Wave Dash, and this was the only song where I had somebody else like recording my vocals for me. Actually, a little bit of Russian roulette as well. Mikey engineered that. But he was kind of guiding me through it. We we recorded all the vocals, and that's why every chorus in the song sounds so different. Um, yeah, so he played he played the banjo on this as well. Anyways, he he uh, shout out Mikey Freedom Heart. Let's go to the next song. This next one is called Mona Lisa, also written in this trip to Paris. Wait, I just realized I never noticed this before. But all, the Paris run is like all three songs are next to each other. It's Kitsune Me Sun Freestyle, Easier to Love You, and Mona, Le Mona Lisa back to back to back. Brief anecdote about Mona Lisa before we get into it. I went and saw Frost Children play their show in Paris. Uh, I met up with them very briefly before the show, and we hung out and talked. And like it was, it was such a love connection, to be honest. Like I just immediately I was like, oh my god, they're so cool. They're so smart. They're so like grounded and easy to talk to, and then their show absolutely amazed me. Such like consummate performers and musicians. 
So I asked them after the show, we were hanging out in Paris. It was like three or 4 a.m. I was like, hey, would y'all potentially be interested in coming to the studio with me? And I remember Lulu like turned to one of the people in their crew and was like, um, hey, do you think we can make this work? They had to go, they basically, the band had to jump through some insane scheduling hoops to, to get in the studio with me. And it impressed the fuck out of me. Like, sorry, am I allowed to say fuck on Spotify? They just, they worked so hard to make sure that this song happened. Um, shout out to Frost Children. Go, yeah, stream Speed Run, stream The Hearth Room. Uh, their song Lethal, oh, okay, you know what? I'll play it after the listening party. Their song Lethal is so good. Oh my God, so good. So, so, so good. Also, I know I've said this on every single stream, but the new stuff that Frost Children have been making, I was like gushing. Like they played it for me in their studio in New York and I was like, it is so good. Anyway, Mona Lisa. I need y'all to open up the fucking pit right now. I need y'all to open up this motherfucking pit right now. Let's go! Uh, 
All right. So this next one is potentially, remember how I said that Easy to Love You is like low key the best song on the album? This next song is maybe high key best song on the album. Um, I've been making a bunch of noise recently about how, you know, oh, I should have made this a single. I should have made this a single. That was, ba- I mean, it's basically me just like pointing people towards the song. I actually feel really good about the decision to not have it be a single. Um, I think it was nice for people to discover on the album. This is called Is There Really No Happiness? And yeah, this song, like, I don't know, it kind of puts together all of the new rock influences that I was ingesting at the time of making this album. And this song is about, (laughs) it's so funny. I'm realizing as I'm talking through this, that this album is like addictions are such a big theme of this record and how they give and take away. And this is about the costs of nostalgia. I'm a very nostalgic person. Um, and I love it and I live for it. And it, it means so much to me. Like nostalgia is a major thing that gets me started working on music. Um, but it can be a bit of an illusion and a bit of a trap. This is, yeah, the song's kind of about childhood. It's about nostalgia. This is called, Is There Really No Happiness? I remember the family PC. There was snow in the hallways. There was blood on my I'm so sorry for interrupting, but I, dude, that line, the vertigo of trying to get close to who I was before remembering, it's so crazy because everything that you're nostalgic for, you experienced it in earnest at the time. It was not nostalgic at the time. And yeah.
uh, I, dude, I don't even remember how I came up with that ending. I think I was just listening to, I knew I wanted to go into a different chord progression at the end. Um, that chord progression only happens there in the song. And it was giving me the vibe of like, previewing the next episode of something where you get a bunch of little snippets of dialogue and yeah, it just it has this like, Oh dude, why am I crying? I had, it has this like hopeful anticipatory feeling. And I just like wanted something that sounded like a bad, like English anime dub on it. So yeah, that's my voice there. Um, okay, let's get to the last song. This is the final reflection, I think, on this subject of my relationship to you guys, my audience. Uh, this is called Everything to Me.
get some tissues. Crush the crew, told it the mess. Mess with the game, you get all of these issues. I just been counting this money. I just left to the bank cause it's funny. Not selling no patties, that's jummy. Nope. I open my doors, they start running. <laughs> it's an event when we open doors, just like the bubble ball. The patties are fish, they are never cold. That's something that played, they would never know. That's something for plague, then I'll never show. Jump up, it's a place that I'll never go. This ice on my wrist will forever glow. They counting you out cause I ran the pole. If he talk on the crew, I got 13 words to say to him. Bitch. Ain't no more customers up in this restaurant, you know there's no saving him. No. He can barely get by, he eat the holograms, living a lot. We kicking him out if he step on the spot. They're watching me flourish, I'm watching him rock. Damn. Brand new bag for bro, but I didn't pay for it. I don't like spending that cash, cause I'm trying to savor it. Secret formula, I went and put flavor in. I do not fuck with no plugins, I can't let no haters in. Sponge boy, get back on the grill. The customers already waiting, they already pay for the meal. Huh, square word. Uh-huh. You been through the deal. Uh-huh. Huh. Keep watch for that little boy that's plotting on me. I know he gon' steal. <laughs> Christy crew in this bitch again. <laughs> Clean that I got nothing on the candy patty. That's a whole bunch of stars you can't steal. <laughs> Whatever. We are this bitch. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, y'all can hear me? Yeah, my team keeps uh, joining trying to make me stop, but I keep kicking them out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for as long as I can. Okay. This is, uh, this is Lethal by... This is Lethal by Frost Children. Uh, um, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. They showed this to me for the first time when I was in Paris. I'm perfect, it's worthless tonight. Keep a spine in your head. I guess I'll live there instead. You're intoxicating, what am I supposed to say? Hey, how are you? Swans, boy! Get back on the grill. The customers are there waiting.
Ah, oh, that's just so, so, so good. Uh, you know, I want to play a song from each of the collaborators as well. Um, so James Ivey worked with me a lot on this album as well. Jimmy was involved in like three or four of the songs and I'm trying to figure out which Jimmy song would be the best to play. I think an extremely good one is, I think I want to play L Trip um, off of his album, Everything Perfect. Um, yeah, dude, James Ivey's so talented. A lot of his new music is also, that's coming up is just incredible. Um, let me find it. James Ivey. Yeah. Oh my god shout out to jimmy i also really recommend the song stereo play um so 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 you know what okay i'm just i'm just gonna play up to the chorus of stereo play um this is a summer bop bump this shit in your car
I remember James sent that song to kind of our friend group and he was like, I think this is really something. And it like, it like, <laughs> being honest, he kind of got crickets from the group chat at first. And then uh, my friend Luke from the band Wave Dash um, was like, you need to change the chorus. And then Jimmy went and rewrote it to what it eventually was. And it just clicked so hard. I was driving in Hawaii with Rika and um, dude, I was like this driving, driving like in a car and listening to that song. It's like, oh, it's just such, such bliss. Um, James Ivey's like discography is just unbelievable. Uh, please bump it. And now on the subject of Wave Dash, we're coming to a close here, although I got one more thing to play after this Wave Dash song. Then we're going to wrap it up. This next song is, uh, so Wave Dash, they're kind of more in the dance music world. They, I met them initially at EDC in probably 2017 or 2018. And they're all like six or seven years younger than me. Um, and I had been familiar with their their game as like kind of bro step, dubstep DJs. <laughs> And um, somebody from my management team had just signed them. And so they came into my trailer to meet me. And right away, I think I have a, I think Rika still has a text that I sent her in 2017 where I was like, I just met these kids from this band called Wave Dash. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be like best friends for life. Like they were so smart and so cool and had such good taste and were all so funny. Um, I just like fell in love with these guys. And uh, so like they're very much in the DJ world, they make dance music primarily. Um, they just released their first mixtape, which is a mixtape called Tempo. And I'm going to play a song off Tempo that has been like, it's kind of just been farming live. Like something about this song, when they perform it live, like I've just been hearing crowds, I had to go, I had to. It's like, it just, this song just goes so hard live. Um, so if you're a DJ, drop this in your sets. This is Had to Go by Wave Dash. Um, Let's get it. By the way, I uh, we do have a little collaboration with one of my side projects, Eco Wraith, my project from when I was 15 for making Eurodance and hands up music. I think 
that may or may not be dropping soon. I did a little, I did a little, I did a little dance track with them for a side project. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Let's follow Wave Dash. have one more this is the last song not really related to smile in any way but instead related to an experience that i had something similar to this so for my birthday in 2021 um rika bought me tickets for like an online streaming concert for my probably my favorite japanese band it's a band called yorushika and i absolutely dude i am obsessed with their music they did a live stream concert um, in I think 2021 or 2022. And uh, I remember being in the in the live stream and it was like 98% Japanese text um, because their audience is primarily Japanese, but there was like 10 or 11 or 12 of us English speakers in the, in the chat for their live concert. Um, and it was just really fun. It was a fun vibe, like experiencing it together with these other people and the music like Yoshka makes people really emotional. Like at the end of the concert, everybody who was in the chat was like the English language speakers. Like, I'm never forget going to forget you guys in the chat. Like, oh my God, friends forever. It was like a very emotional experience. And just seeing everybody together in this chat is like reminding me of it. I'm going to play you my favorite song from Yoroshika. It's a song called Thought Crime. Yeah. 
Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for listening to some of my favorite songs with me. I hope you found something that you really like. I'm sure somebody on Reddit or Discord or something has compiled a set list of everything that I played today. Um, I got more I'd like to play. So let's do this again sometime. Uh, yeah. Smile World Tour coming to your city soon. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you guys. All right. Have a great day. Bye bye. See ya. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.